back to historical context, today we continue our series on the English colonies during the Commonwealth of England. And up to this point in the series, we've discussed uh, the events in all of the colonies going up to 1652. But I think one thing that's missing is talking strictly about the events in England and how that government looks. While the Commonwealth was heavier on colonies like Virginia and Maryland, episodes up to this point haven't really discussed the inner workings of English government. And this knowledge may be important later as changes in England have varying impact on the colonies. So today, the Commonwealth of England Part 1 focuses on England from 1649 to 1652. Prior to the execution of Charles I, the country's parliament was actually still divided on whether or not the country should continue as a monarchy. In December of 1648, a purge of parliament members loyal to royalists occurred, and this was done by the New Model Army in an event known as Pride's Purge. In this event, members loyal to King Charles I were barred from entering the parliament and 45 parliamentary members were arrested. The remaining parliament was called the Rump Parliament and with its opposition removed, it cleared the way for the execution of King Charles I. And as we know, it was done within a month of that. Pride's Purge is considered by many historians to be the only coup d'etat in English history, because remember, it involved the military. One surprising opponent of Pride's Purge was parliamentarian and former Massachusetts Bay Governor Henry Vane. Vane actually resigned in protest over the purge only to rejoin the parliament a couple of months later. It is quite likely that without Pride's purge, there may not have been an execution of King Charles I. So when England did execute King Charles and declare itself a republic and become the Commonwealth, the rump parliament remained and ran the country. Despite being in control in 1649, it still took England three years to bring Virginia under submission. Why was that? It was most likely because in 1649, England's neighbors, Scotland and Ireland, were still loyal to the English monarchy, and as a result of this, England needed to conduct military operations with Oliver Cromwell leading the military in Ireland. The Council of State would become established in 1649 and basically be the executive branch of the English government. Henry Vane, the Massachusetts Bay governor, former governor, who would be ejected over a religious dissent opposed by John Winthrop and others, would rise to the president position of the Council of State. The Council of State at this time tended to work side by side with Parliament. So Parliament being the legislative branch, the Council of State being the executive branch. While the parliamentarians were born out of the religious reformation, they sought to curb any additional religious awakenings. In 1650, the Parliament passed the Blasphemy Act, which was designed to curb religious enthusiasm. The Quaker population at this time was rising, and the Parliament was trying to resist or restrict their spreading. Meanwhile, revenue was raised by selling assets formerly belonging to the Crown and the Anglican Church. The Rump Parliament began working on a comprehensive reform bill to institute the principles of a republic onto the country. The reform bill was nothing short of innovative, with the Parliament being restructured to match the proportion of the population they represented, 
similar to the U.S. House of Representatives. And it made members accountable to recurring elections. The reforms would culminate with a working constitution. So really, we're talking about accelerated democracy, if you will, in these reforms. Huge, huge hopes for England. But Parliament could not agree on a certain set of reforms. And doesn't that happen all so often? You think big. You think really big, but then you start having disagreements. It is likely that the redistricting, if you will, would mean less power for certain members of Parliament, possibly their positions being eliminated altogether. So there was likely hesitancy to continue the push for reform. Annoyed by the lack of progress, Oliver Cromwell attended a Parliament hearing in April of 1653. He heard a couple of speeches and then dissolved it. He had to use the military to forcefully clear the chamber. These actions demonstrate that politics in England were far from harmonious during this time. And it explains why we don't see the, the country take such a hard, active role in the colonies. They're trying to get their own stuff together. They really don't have a lot of time to mind what's going on across the ocean. Cromwell would later be named Lord Protector, and he would serve as the country's chief executive. But that is something we're going to discuss further down the line at another time. We are now ready to go back to Virginia and see how they handle the Commonwealth of England. And we'll do that next time on Historical Context.